here with Joe Rotella, and Joe is going to break down the whole process of making molds for us, because there's a lot of different ways that we can make molds, right? Absolutely, and the kind of mold you make really depends on both the material that you're molding, if you're going to reuse the molds, and then what you're going to actually cast in it. So the first one I have is a mold putty, and what's great about this is it's so easy to use. It comes in two parts. Now, this is the only thing that I'm actually familiar with, because I've seen this a lot for jewelry when people are molding and casting in jewelry. Yep, yep, it's great for small pieces. A lot of folks keep this like in a little contact lens case or travel with it because, ah. you know, if you're somewhere, I've heard rumors, I'm not going to say who, but somebody will go into a store, see a piece they like, put it in the wagon, mold it, put it I back. actually knew a jewelry artist who would carry some putty around and if you were wearing something that she liked, she'd be like, can I mold that? Yeah, yeah. And she'd just take the, the putty because you have to take even parts, right, of the even two parts. halves and then you kind of uh, mash just it around. Until you get a consistent color. And the nice thing about having the two different colors is that you can see when they're actually mixed together, yeah, see, obviously. I'm getting close. I still it's have still some marbled, white in there. As I would we say. want just a consistent color. And it doesn't, you know, for people who are wondering about this kind of thing, now what are the applications, obviously, besides I was saying you mush it into some jewelry somewhere, why is the reason that you would want to use this kind of mold? This kind of mold, the nice part is that it doesn't need any special equipment to make the mold itself. I mean, I'm just using my hands, right? And it's small, I can take it with me anywhere, and it cures fast. So if you need to make a mold in a class, mm -hmm. this is a great way to go. If you want to do it on the road, if you want to do it you know, at a cruise ship or in a store. When you're done, a lot of folks will take this and they'll try to press what they're molding into it and that's gonna give you bubbles and stuff. You wanna instead take the material and press it around the object. And this type of cast or mold isn't really good if the object has a lot of undercuts. This is good for something round like this. Now the amount of time you took to sort of mix this together, is this really what it would be like or at home would you take a little bit longer? You know, I think I have a pretty uniform color so I'm kind of happy with this and we can let that sit and now that little mold will cure. And there's no problem leaving that piece of metal in there. It's not going to get stuck in there permanently no, or no, anything no, like no, that. No. Mm -mm. And I can see that you have one which is already hardened up. And it's very, very flexible. So that is, after you poured something in there to cast, that's how you would pop it yeah. out because it's so flexible. And what's cool is I can use this with clay, resin. This is food safe. I could put chocolate or butter in it. Ooh, I love that idea. But this mold, you're only going to be able to have this mold. You can use it over and over again, but it's always this mold. Okay. And now this next one, I know we actually have to add some firepower to. We do. What's cool is that this mold making material is reusable. We just microwave it. Oh, so that's what you mean, which is obviously we can reuse this if we microwave yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm going to put it in the microwave for about, oh, two to two and a half minutes. Now, every microwave is a little bit different. And I know you so, said we have to be at 50% here. You can't do it at 100%. Correct. So I'm going to go ahead and set the power to 50 and the time to about two and a half. And we're just going to let this rock and roll until that material melts. Awesome. So we're just about ready. Our two and a half minutes are up. And we'll wait for it to give us the ding. It should be and just to kind be of clear, nice I could take this mold when I was done with it, throw it in the microwave, and reuse it over and over and over again. That's the best part of this particular material. Now, this is hot, so you're going to be very careful. I'm going to be very careful. And you're holding it by the edges, obviously. And we're not going to slosh any of it so, anywhere. And you know, you don't have to do it instantly. Let's give it just a second while we I talk see that about it's the bubbling. mold. It's bubbling. <laughs> So I made a mold here. You can use any non-porous material. I used a piece of clear plexiglass and just hot glued it to a piece. And then the piece I want to mold, I put here. And of course, the part I care about has to be face up. And I would assume you want to generally mold something metal when you're using something hot like this. I wouldn't use chocolate. Oh, yes. But metal, clay, <laughs> porcelain. And all we're going to do is pour this on top of the piece. Oh, and it's just easy enough to get in there. And you don't have to fill the whole cylinder, right? You no, just have to no, cover no. that just piece. Just cover your piece. That you've actually got but in there. But you know, there. you don't have to be too worried about being wasteful because it's totally reusable. Of course, so you can just keep melting it over and over again. Now, is this, this mold actually the piece that's in there? It did, it came right out of this piece, obviously pushed way down mm -hmm. deep. And this is so flexible, it's easy to get out. Although sometimes you can use, the same way you get a muffin out of the muffin tin sometimes, right. you know, go all the way around it carefully, pry a little bit up, pull, but the end result is totally flexible. And then here I cast the same piece. And then you could, of course, paint that or whatever you Absolutely. wanted. And then I know that we have another kind of molding material. So this molding material is silicon rubber, and it's really professional grade. Now, if you could start to stir this yes. for me. 
we want to get that nice So I'm just going to use a big old tongue depressor to do that. Now, we're going to make it all, if you didn't want to, you could use measuring cups to get the right proportions. But okay. this particular material produces a highly flexible, professional-grade silicon mold. And this is great for detail, but it's also great for undercuts. If you what look are at, undercuts? Well, if we look at the bunny rabbit that I've got inside this mold, ready to go, you know, it has to get, like, under his chin and under his chest and around his oh, legs. Oh, because it's very three-dimensional. Like, unlike the metal piece that we had in the mold with the red, what, which was like a flat-ish piece, it didn't need to get yep. under anything. This I see. And this is good for multi-part molds. You know, if you have to make molds of two halves and put them together, things like that. So now that you've got that started, that's the base. Okay. And I'm going to add the catalyst. And you want to keep stirring. Oh, it's a pretty color. We're going to stir until that's got a nice uniform color and consistency. What you're basically making there is liquid rubber. Ooh. And the cool part about that is once it's all mixed and we pour it into this mold, because it is a liquid, like the consistency of, would you say, syrup? Yeah. It'll go under those ears and into all those undercuts. Then once it cures, which is about two to four hours, we'll end up with a silicon mold that's highly flexible and super detailed. If you look at that original house, how much detail is in the trees and the texture on the roof? The mold that it produced has the same detail. I was going to say, and then that white piece, which I assume is what comes out of the mold, is just absolutely gorgeous. I can see every straw on the roof. I can see every little bump of the rock. It's kind of amazing to me. And the thing that I think is so interesting is that this really is just, it, it makes an exact replica. It's, exact. Like, it's like magic. Highly detailed. And the mold is so flexible. This has got something already cast and painted in, mm -hmm. and I just put it back in so you could see. You don't have to be, you know, so afraid to take it out because it's so flexible. You can just keep working it and working it. You want to get those undercuts. When it's got undercuts, it's a little bit tricky. You can see. May I pour this? Does look this that. look like the right color, by the way? Yeah, you're really good. Now just pour it right in. Okay. So I'm just going to pour this in, and if you wouldn't mind taking us through some of the finished pieces real quick, Joe. So we have a white opaque casting resin that produced the bear and the bunny, and a clear casting resin that I used to make the coaster. You can also dye that with non-water-based products, and that's how we made the wood bowl and the pen. So cool. This makes me want to just like mold and cast absolutely everything, Joe. Thank you.